Hello there, fellow space engineers. I am the Linking Tinker, and this is a little something I've been working on. The vehicle that I'm currently in is something that I like to call Center Rover. And let me show you why. It's basically a centipede. So let's get things this thing started. To do that, we'll press 1. And the legs start moving. Starts crawling along. Nice. So this thing basically has a max speed of about 8.6 meters per second, which isn't too bad for a 10-legged beast. And if you want to turn left, you can press 4. And if you want to turn right, you can press 6. And if you want to straighten yourself back out again, you press 5. And if you want to stop, you can press 9. You'll come to a screeching halt. So this is basically something that runs off of a program I've been working off on called easy automation and this program basically takes its instructions from this LCD screen that you see behind the cockpit. Now this program is the main thing that I wanted to showcase in this video and I have got a few more examples of what is possible with this program over in the distance over there so when we crawl back over there I'll show those to you and basically this program allows you to automate things easily, like the name suggests. It has a bunch of different options like waiting for certain things to be true and delaying in milliseconds, writing things to screens and changing colors of different objects, well, of like text and uh, lights and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to be making a few video tutorials on how to use that. I don't get stuck here. Oh no. Oh no. I'm stuck. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Stupid center rover. <laughs> it doesn't have a reverse option. Alright, here we go. Stop with nine. There we go. Alright, so <laughs> we've got a delay example right here. And this shows you that you can have very slight delays. It's much better than the timer block, which only gives you increments of one second. With increments of one second, I never could have made something like that center rover over there. So now we can do stuff like this. And stuff like this. There are one button that can do all of those things. So as you can see, the code can be self-referencing. And it's very easy to do. If we take a look in the private text of this LCD, you'll find the code. All the code that we write for this program is in the private text. And we have different code blocks. And the code block begins with the at symbol and is has a name and then has a couple of brackets that contain all the code. So we've got the code block for one of the buttons, which is the wave from the left to right and the code block for the second button, which is the wave right to left, and code for the third button, which is jagged times three, and the fourth button is all together now, and all you needed to do there was write in the code block names, and it will reference all those previous ones, so it makes it pretty easy to do different stuff and make it self-referencing. So. Over here, we've got the programming block and timer block that it uses. And this is pretty much the thing that is running all of these different examples. And it's doing this by having the button run the program with an argument that says, hey, program, take a look at this LCD and come in here to the private text and take a look at this specific code block and run just that. So with that, we can do stuff like make an elevator. And this elevator, when we press the second button there, will come up to floor two. And the third button will bring us up to floor three. But if we press the second button again, it will bring us back down to floor two. So as you can see, it allows us to check what conditions are, such as the position of the pistons that run this elevator. And depending on that, it can do different things. And then when it uh, when it checks, it can also 
wait for a certain thing to be true, such as the pistons getting to a certain extension, and then it can stop the pistons. So yeah, we've got if and when statements, which makes making things like elevators really easy. So we've got a gravity crane example right here. This example basically shows you how you can make automated things by having stuff happen in sequence. Right now we've got all our stuff over there in the blue bin, and if we want to bring it over the red bin, we'll press this red button here. And as you can see, all I needed to do is press one button, and it will do the rest. Comes over to the blue crate, pulls all the stuff into the crane, brings it over the barrier, and then brings it to the red and drops it. And then it will bring itself back to the neutral position. Sweet! All with one button press. Gotta love it. So over here we've got the rotation example. This is the last example. And it shows how you can have a rotor rotate to the position that you want it to rotate. But not only that, it will always take the shortest path to the position that you request. So, as you can see, it's going back and forth. And, yeah. I'll be putting this up on the workshop so you can check those examples out. And that's pretty much it for the examples. In the future videos, I'm going to be making some uh, examples and some tutorials on how to create your own stuff and how to put the code in and set up all the physical components and all that jazz. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you there. See you later.